Good evening, everyone, and uh, a very, very warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining us on our fantastic Zoom call. Um, and this week we have an amazing special guest, Emma, Smed Emma Snedden, uh, Presidential Marketing Director. Um, such a huge success story in our business. Uh, such an absolutely amazing person. Um, and so I'm just going to see if you're there. Emma, are you there? Oh, yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Oh, my, you look like a DJ. Fantastic. <laughs> One, kids can't hear. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good, good, good. Well, um, let's just get straight into it um, because we've only got 30 minutes. But first of all, thank you very, very much indeed uh, for joining us. It's a pleasure. Uh, this is an absolute treat as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. <laughs> what you have to say. We're all going to be sitting on the edge of our seats listening to you because as far as I'm concerned, you are one of the most compelling, I probably, I think the most compelling speaker that we have in our business in the UK. Every time I listen to you, just unbelievable. The passion, the belief, it just oozes out of every pore. Um, and uh, I think you bring something very, very special to what, what we're doing. And so we're going to be so fascinated to hear, um, you know, about you and, and most importantly, obviously about Birmingham. But um, First of all, just let me ask you, I'm just tell you a, a little bit about your background. What's your, what's your background? Um, hi, thanks very much for that introduction, James. There's always no pressure to be good <laughs> or interesting. <laughs> so I'll do my best. Um, so my background, really, um, I mean, I've been in the Juice Plus company now for almost three years. Um, in March, it'll be three years. So um, I'm still an infant when it comes to the business, really. Um, I was 36 when I joined Juice Plus and I kind of stumbled into it like most people do. Prior to that, I, um, or at the time when I found Juice Plus, I was a very busy corporate mum. I had a really busy career. I was working 14, 16 hour days, five days a week. Um, we've got three kids. Um, a lot of you might identify with the kind of treadmill of life that you can get on when you get into mid thirties, mortgage, husband, home, kids, job, uh, zero time for yourself. And uh, that was kind of my life. I wasn't unhappy at all, but um, did think uh, often is this all it's ever going to be, you know, this kind of um, groundhog day of just getting the kids ready for school and going to work and coming home and feeding them and putting them to bed and then getting up the next day and getting the kids to school and going to work and coming home and all of that. So living for the weekend. Um, and then at 36 years old, I came across Juice Plus as a product first through John Hollowaddy, who all of you I'm sure will know. He was my personal trainer at the time. And uh, as a busy mum, I was absolutely exhausted. So I went to the gym at six o'clock in the morning because it was the, physically the only time of the day that I could fit in any exercise at all was when the rest of the world was asleep or certainly my family were asleep. Um, and um, like a lot of people didn't think it was for me, didn't think it was something that was product or business was, was for me and I, I couldn't have been more wrong. So that's really my background. Um, I, I live in the Northwest of England. I'm a masquerade behind this Geordie accent. I'm actually Irish. Um, so, you know, nothing's ever quite what it appears. <laughs> I think uh, that that's true with me too. Fascinating. So what did John actually say to you when he first introduced you <laughs> to it? I mean, how did the process go? Because obviously it can't have been, hey, this is Juice Plus. Yes, it must have been a process. Tell us a little bit about that process. I'll tell you the truth, he was rubbish. Um, it was the worst Good. pitch I've ever... <laughs> Um, because it's funny, it's a good story actually, and we should do it as a double act one day, I think, the two of us, but um, he, uh, it's, it's an interesting one. So at the time, we're talking like probably four years ago, John and I met, and because I was so busy, we didn't, we clicked really well from a personal trainer, we, we respected each other, but we didn't chat. You know, I went, I'm the kind of person, like, I went in, went to the gym, worked hard, went home, you know, we didn't, I didn't stick around, I didn't have time. So I went in, did what I needed to do and left. And we respected each other's time very much. So he, from what he says now was what he saw was a successful corporate person who worked really hard. And he, and he always says that he used to go home to Vicky and go, I've met this girl and she'd be amazing at the business, but I don't know how to talk to her about it. Um, and he thought that I didn't need it financially. So at the time, it's, it's hard to look at where he is now. At that point, he was probably about an SSC, really. It was just starting to take off for him, really. And, um, and he was looking, he, at the time, he was looking for people who were skint or, you know, who were unhappy or, and that's not what I was. I, you know, I had, I drove a nice car, lived in a nice house, but I had, what he didn't see was the other side of that, which was that, you know, I had no time, the sacrifices that I was making 
to be able to have the nice car and the nice house and that stuff. And, um, and all he said to me in, it was about October uh, 2012, and he just said, um, I've got a business opportunity for you. And I said, I'm not interested. And he went, okay. And that was it at the beginning. That was his first like, approach about the business. He never mentioned the product to me at all. Uh, really, a few people that were, that were in the same classes as me, I knew took Juice Plus, but I definitely didn't think that I needed it. I ate really healthily as far as I was concerned. Uh, I had a lot of fruit and veg in my diet already. I thought it was a fad. And John never really mentioned it to me. He used to keep them quite separate at that point. Anyway, so that was his, what he calls himself as half assed pitch. Um, he said, I've got a business opportunity here. I said, I'm not interested. And he said, okay. And that was about it really for about another three months. Um, and then I, it got to Christmas um, and I, you know, put on a little bit of Christmas weight like a lot of people do and um, got to January and I thought I need to lose a bit of weight, just like half a stone, nothing major. Uh, and, I, and I just thought I'll try this Juice Plus thing because it's just you know, something a little bit and, and he'd already spoken to you about the product by that stage? He never mentioned it to me. It was other people in the gym were taking it. I kind of saw a little bit on Facebook. Not much, not like it is now, not much at all. But there was a lad in the gym that we went to who kind of was talking about it every now and again. I'd had a conversation with somebody about it and totally dismissed it without knowing anything about it, like a lot of people do. And I'm talking just about complete at this point. I didn't even know that the capsules existed. Um, and I decided to take the shakes completely just to lose a bit of Christmas weight. I had no idea of the benefits that I was going to get or anything like outside of that. Um, and so that's what I did. I just went to him and I said, oh, can I try this Juice Plus stuff that everyone's talking about? And he was like, yeah, yeah. Anyway, and I loved it. Like it fitted into my life. I never used to eat breakfast because if you're busy at work, you'll, you, you probably recognize I was like the last person on the priority list. So I would feed my kids, make sure my husband had food and I'd go to work and it would be midday before I'd realised I hadn't eaten breakfast at all. So I didn't eat badly. My downfall was I didn't really eat at all because I made, you know, rather than make a, full, a poor food choice, I made no choice. And this just fitted in like that. I just used to have one in the morning and I just started to have more energy. And within a couple of weeks, I felt better, looked better. No one told me that that was ever going to happen. It just kind of crept up on me. So I naturally started to share the product with people because I felt amazing on it. And then John told me about the business again. And what Maybe made, this is about the third time. Yeah, and so what made you say, right, okay, I'm, I'm going to go for this? What was the sort of clincher? Because yeah. you, you were obviously already so busy, but what was mm. the thing that put you over the line? You thought, okay, I'm going to do this. Uh, well, so the, the best line that, uh, for me, you know, there's always like one line or two lines that somebody say that click with you. And he said to me, I said no again when he first said, you know, this is the business opportunity I was talking to you, this is it. And I said, like, forget it. Um, I haven't got time. And he said, it's a business designed for busy people and you'd be perfect at it. It's a business designed for busy people and you'd be perfect at it. And I just thought, so it was a compliment, which is always nice, but also a business that was designed for me. I could never come across something that was a business designed for busy people. But I'm a, I've always been a believer, if you want something done, give it to a busy person to do it because they'll just get on with it. So I, I, I really, like fast forwarding slightly, when I did get involved, I never procrastinated or navel gazed or talked, or, I just got on with it. I didn't have time to, to, to overanalyze what I was doing. I just did what I could do in the time that I had to do it. And it, and, and that's, and it is a business design for that. You don't, you don't need to understand everything. You just need to go and talk about it to people. And, and what was your expectation when you got going, Emma? What was your expectation mm. of what you could achieve? Or what, what, where, where were your goals at with it? So at the very beginning, well, initially it was, like John said, oh, it's only 65 pounds to join. And I thought, you know what? I mean, to me at the time, it was, it's, it's still the money that I could have spent on a night, but it wasn't a huge investment for me personally. But it was, you know, I still had to, you know, lie to my husband about what I was spending the money on. But um, it was, that wasn't a big risk for me. So that was a good thing. But, but, but uh, I just thought if I can make that money back, and this is a good way of thinking about it, even now for it, that it's 50 quid, if you can make that money back, everything else you do is profit. Yeah, and that's quite unusual in any business. So what you know, you, and I thought, well, if I can get that sixty-five quid back, even if nothing else ever happens, then I've not lost anything. And um, so my, that was my first goal was to make my money back. And the second goal, then, when I realised I could do it and it did fit around, was to just make two hundred pounds a month, uh, which I thought it, it was about March twenty thirteen. So I thought if I can make two hundred pounds a month, I'll have a thousand pounds at Christmas. So I was going to save it all. I've got 13 nieces and nephews, three kids, and Christmas is always expensive. We never had the money for it. 
Um, for all, we had great jobs and nice cars and all that. We didn't have a lot, any disposable income whatsoever. Everything was owed out in, you know, in cars and debts and houses and all that stuff. So we didn't have any spare cash. So this, for me, was like going to be make our Christmas easier. So that was my initial goal. And my first check was £84. So I thought, well, I'm halfway there. <laughs> wow. And can I ask you, I mean, Emma, obviously, you know, you, from there, you really started building really quite amazing momentum, right? And for uh -huh. people that are listening now and they're thinking, well, I'm just getting going, you know, what did Emma do? What was her daily routine to get her mm. moving? And what was the reason why you were able to create so much momentum? What happened? A um, couple of things, really. So the first thing was that I um, I taught a belief in, every, in, in myself, in the business model, and in the product. So like I said, I'd taken the product anyway. I knew the benefits that I felt. And you know, some of the stuff that we teach people now, I kind of did naturally. So I only ever really talked about my own story. So I, I, I don't know about, you know, being a professional athlete. I don't know about having Crohn's disease or some of the things that people get wrapped up in the nitty gritty detail. All I say is I take the product and I feel amazing. And if you take the product, you'll feel amazing too. And I learned that from Jeffrey Burton, you know, on a, on a YouTube video or something right at the beginning. You know, so, so for me, I was like, I take, and, I, and I genuinely, I meant it then and I mean it now. I, I take the product and I feel amazing. And if you take the product, you'll feel amazing too. And then someone would say, oh, I don't know, has it got, why has it not got Gucci berries in? I don't know. All I know is I take it and I feel amazing. If you take it, you'll feel amazing too. And people, can, people knew I was being honest. People trusted that I wasn't, you know, I, I wouldn't give a product to my children and my husband or to myself that I didn't 110% think was fabulous. So it makes total sense for me to just share that with people. So I did it naturally anyway. And so that's how I kind of got started with building a, you know, a little customer base uh, at the beginning. It was just my, my, um, my uh, people I just bumped into, you know, the, the nursery nurse staff where the kids went to school, that kind of thing. Um, and then... Uh, yeah, I, whenever I had a happy customer, I always, always talked to him about the business opportunity. So the thing is, I mean, obviously, you know, people say, uh, it's, it, you know, a lot of people are developing customers and, and, you know, developing customers is pretty easy because everybody's so interested in what we're doing. But the, but the really interesting thing, I think, will be a little bit about how you started developing a team. Because yeah. how did that start? Because that, for a lot of people, is a big jump to develop a team. So, um really right at the beginning all of my distributors certainly my, my, my main distributors have come from my customer base um and for me it's a no-brainer really that's how i got started and I, think I, joined, I took the product looked at the product joined the business because it was a no-brainer so i think if you do the same teach the same to, to go and find people who take if you've got 10 customers this is what i did so say when i got, i don't remember exactly about 10 maybe 15 customers in the first month or two i talked to every single one i looked after them text them once a week, put them in a Facebook group. I had a little support network on Facebook. And then I looked out for the people who interacted in that group without me. So I was working really, like, you know, really long hours. And I would find that I, someone would post a question in that group and somebody else would answer it. So Amy McDermott is a perfect example of that. She, uh, for those of you who know her, she's an EMD in the business. She's very active, always on Facebook. She was a new mum at the time. And, um, so I would find I'd come out of a meeting and she would have answered everybody's questions on the support group before. I'd, so that's the kind of person that you're looking for, someone who's a self-starter, who's motivated, who doesn't need, you know, a lot. So you just approach them about the business. You're doing it anyway, which is what John said to me. You're doing it anyway. You're just not getting paid for it. But what I do now and what, I, what I, outside of that is just, if you've got a happy customer, just great line is who do you know who? Who do you know? Who would like the results that you're getting? Who do you know who would be interested in earning five hundred pound a month part time? Who do you know who? Because it takes the pressure off you saying, "Do you want? Do you know? Do you would you like to earn some more money part time?" Because people can be quite defensive. It's almost like you're insinuating that they haven't got any money. But if you say, "Who do you know who? Do you know anybody? I'm looking for people. The business is going really well. I'm looking for people to do it with me. Do you know anybody who'd be interested?" And almost without exception, everybody went, "Yeah, me. I'd be interested." I was like, oh, great, cool. Well, I'm doing this event next week. Why don't you come along? So that was the, next, the third thing was doing events. I always had something to funnel them into. So just, let's just, I, so Emma, I just wanted to talk to you, and, and we'll come on to the events in just a moment, but I just want yeah. to ask you, um, by the end of the first year, how much money mm -hmm. had you earned from this? In the, in the first year? Yeah. Um, 
probably about 400,000, I think. 350, 400,000. Incredible. I mean, it's such a. Including my bonuses. That's an extraordinary story. Extraordinary. Crazy. I thought I was only going to earn a thousand pounds a year. <laughs> yeah, no, no, amazing. So you started, you, you, you were always running events. So what type of events mm-hmm. did you start running? Uh, did, you, did you have it in the home or? or yeah. Where, yeah. In the home. So very initially, so I was very teachable and this is really important. John used to say, read that book. And I was like, I've read it already. And he'd say, do this in home event. And I was like, it's on Friday. And just that, we worked really well. Everything he told me to do, I did. I was I done it, done it. What do I do now? What do I do now? What's next? Um, and what sort of books were you reading in the early stages? So right at the beginning, for me, it was more about, um, um, and I, I started using my old in the car. So I was driving a lot. So I stopped listening to talk sport and started listening to like Jim Rohn. Um, building your network marketing business and I still listen to that probably once a week now but I used to listen to it every single day over and over. my kids know that DVD or audio off by heart um, that's the best one for anyone who's even in the even if you've been in the business for a few years I think that's still the best one that's, that, you, that I draw on now the most um, that one and um, I use YouTube like a, like a university because it's free so you don't have to watch a lot of YouTube quite often. You can just have it on and listen to it. So I used to listen to Jeff Aberti a lot on YouTube and um, more, uh, more Jim Rowan on YouTube, but also Tony Robbins from a self-development point of view. Fantastic. So all of those things are available. Yeah, that, that, that's, and how about Don Saylor? Do, have you, are you a fan of Don Saylor or not? Yeah, right, yeah, not so much now, actually, but right at the beginning, I listened to the, I read the 45 second presentation, cover to cover, and uh, the four year career, that was another one that I read probably in the first six months, because from a corporate background, I needed to help people understand how this business worked and why it wasn't a you know, just a get rich quick scheme. It was a, because Matt, for me, I, sometimes the, the faster your business grows, the harder it is to duplicate yourself because people go, oh, it's all right for you, but I couldn't do that. So I had to kind of say, look, I, you, doesn't, you don't have to do it as fast as I did. You can do it in four years or five years. If someone had said to me, it'll take you five years, but in five years time, you'll be earning the same as you're earning working full time now, but you'll, you know, you'll have no debt and you'll be working a few hours a day. I'd have bitten the hand off. I'm just, I just work really hard to make it happen faster, that's all. Fantastic. So tell us a little bit, obviously we've started talking about the events, but yeah. let's just begin to talk about the really big events, the conferences, because obviously we've got yeah. Birmingham coming up 25th, 27th of, of February. You know, it's yeah. only a, a few weeks away now. Um, mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit about your first event, that your first big event that you went to and the kind of impact it, that it had on you. So a huge um, impact on me and, and, and particularly on my husband. So... Um, when I joined the business, like a lot of people's other halves, my husband was extremely sceptical. He was really sceptical about the product when I first started taking that. I used to hide it at the back of the cupboard because I couldn't be bothered to have the conversation about it. Um, it used to come in tins that looked like, you know, there could be anything in this thing. You know, just, you'll remember it if you've been in the business a few years. It's much more professional looking product now, but the product itself is exactly the same. Um, but so for me, what I wanted to do was try and get, so I used to do in-home events when he was out so that I didn't have to justify what I was doing, daft stuff like that. But anyway, so we got to June. I've had a couple of promotions. I think I was about sales, I was sales coordinator. And it was May actually. And the opportunity to attend the Dublin uh, conference came up. So as I said earlier on, I'm from Ireland. And at the time, my little, our little boy was about two and a half, I think. And uh, we had not had two consecutive days away, you know, nights away, sorry, since we'd had him. So I pitched this, come with me to this conference as why don't we go away and have two nights away together we'll get someone to babysit the kids so he decided he would come with me so it was that that weekend had a huge impact on me on my business and on him because he saw he saw then what what I could see that this wasn't just some little thing that I was you know pottering about at the edges was this was like a, a really big possibility and the speakers that I saw there were people like Gordon Hester who's actually speaking at Birmingham this year um Gary Giles, who was, um, he talked about the product. So the importance of these big conventions is you get to, you get to see um, and hear from people who've been in the business for a long time, which is really, really important because you, you always go away from this, and you'll know this, Jim, you go away from these conventions like standing really tall and feeling really proud, and it doesn't matter what anybody throws at you after that. You're like, yeah, whatever, you haven't seen what I've seen. And that's really the only difference between the people who get what we do and the people who don't, is that they haven't seen what you've seen. So you have to get yourself along to those conventions so that you can see 
what they haven't seen, if that makes sense. So you get to speak, you know, uh, Dave O'Brien spoke, Desert Marathon when I've been in the business as well, but been in the product for 19 years. Um, I got to stand on stage as a sales coordinator and, you know, Simon Bowler shoved a microphone in my face for the very first time. And I remember going, oh, I'm going to be an NMD by Christmas. I don't even, I came off the stage, couldn't believe I'd even said that out loud. And it was just being in, being in an environment where everybody feels like you feel. Everybody's on the same journey. Everybody's at different stages on the journey, but it's so supportive as well. You'll not meet anybody in any of those environments you'll say you can't do that or you'll never achieve that or that's unrealistic or pull yourself together or you, you could literally say anything and people would be like brilliant go for it we'll really support you and that i've never been in an environment really like that before ever so um i came back from that event in may 2013 and i was like i am gonna like gonna smash this and i'll tell you one line that really changed and there was always a light bulb moment at every single one of these that you go to and the one in uh dublin for me I was three months into the business. And I, at that point, I was thinking, I realised you could probably earn £2,000 a month. That was realistic. Gordon Hester, who's speaking in Birmingham as well, stood on the stage and said, as a, as a kind of an aside, it wasn't like part of his presentation even. He just said, I've lost count of the number of mums who've become, number of full-time mums who've become millionaires in this business. And I... I remember I was sat at the back by myself, didn't really know anybody, and I start, I was writing it down. I've still got the bit of paper, I wrote it down what word for word. I've lost count of the number of mums who've become full-time, sorry, full-time mums who've become millionaires in the business. And my, like my jaw hit the floor, I was like, what? Like, not just I know one mum who has, I've lost count of the number of mums who have. And I just thought, right, well, and for me, I didn't even question that. I just thought, if that's even possible, if anybody's done it before, then I'm going to do it too. And I ran down the stairs, my husband was in the bar downstairs. I ran down the stairs to the, um, the bar and he was watching the cricket on his iPad. And I was like, Mike, Mike, oh my God, this guy upstairs has just said I can be a millionaire. Like, I'm going to, and I'm going to do it. I am and I'm going to do it. And he just went, okay, like, go back upstairs and find out how. And I was like, okay, I will, I'm back upstairs. And I never looked back from that moment. And, it was, and Gordon and I are now really good friends as well. I went up to, this is crucial. I went up to him in the bar that night and said to him, you said this, and he didn't even remember saying it, you know. I said, you said this, and you've changed my life just for that one thing. I introduced myself to him, you've got to get this. I didn't want to, I was petrified, he'd be like, go away. But I went out and I'd really encourage you to do that, go and speak to people, go and introduce yourself, and say like, you know, you inspired me, or you said this, or, you know, anything. But you've got to kind of jump in and get, get to know people. Wow, that's amazing. So, so Emma, what would you say to people that are saying, first of all, you know, we're looking, we're thinking of going to Birmingham, but also yeah. how, how would you encourage people? What would you say to people who might be thinking, well, maybe I can bring some other people, but I'm not quite sure if I can and all this. How are you planning your strategy with your team to really get as many people there as possible? Sorry, just the head and husband's just walked in. I've been talking about him. I didn't realise he was in the room next door. <laughs> I know, it's very typical, yeah. Just but, talking about Dublin. Um, yeah. So basically, um, my, so I'll, I'll start, I think it varies on, on the kind of the team that you've got and how, but, but the, the top and bottom of it is, I'm quite, um, so if, Sven Goebel, who's the vice president of the company in Europe, he said right at the beginning of my career in the, with the business when he first joined, uh, um, events are about new people. So you should always be taken by new people. It doesn't mean it doesn't have to be people that aren't in the business, but I think it's really important for the people that have joined the business in the last 12 months or anybody who's never been to a big convention. They're the number one people that I would, you know, ensure are at the convention because they're the people who need the belief. They're the people probably who are getting the most um, potential negativity about things. They're the people whose family maybe don't quite get it. They're the people who need the kind of rod of steel down their backs and the confidence to be able to go out and, and talk confidently about the product because they, like I said earlier, you, they see then what other people haven't seen. And, and I, um, I, I try and so share the video that Simon posted. You know, there's one, there's a video of the highlights of last year, for example. So people think, so bear in mind, right, when I used to go to conferences in my other job, it was boring, like didn't want to be there. Uh, everybody was like clock watching, how fast can I get out of here? And, um, and the difference with these, so that's what people are expecting. When you're saying come to a conference, they're like, no, I can't imagine anything worse than spending my weekend at a conference. So your role with your team and your potentials is to help them see that it's not like that. So our conferences are really good fun. They're, and you know, you leave there inspired, excited, motivated. You don't have to be there either. If you think it's rubbish, you can leave. 
Like no one locks the door. And that's the difference. And it was Mike actually that pointed out to me, I think we were in Manchester conference or something. And he said, there's a thousand or 1500 people in this room and every, on a Saturday afternoon, he's like, and everybody's here because they want to be here. That's why it feels so good. That's why it's so exciting because everybody's in that room because they want to be, not because they have to be. So it's really important to try and get across to people why why they need to be there, why they need that. We call it in, in the team, like you, it's vinyl skin, but it doesn't matter what team you're in. It's, it's that tough exterior that gives you the confidence to be able to go out to the world when you leave there, knowing that you've got a rock solid product, understanding a little bit more about the research, because you might have heard from a doctor, being inspired from some other distributors who are where you want to be. You've got to be around people who, you know, build you up, who, who you know, when I was in Dublin, I sat, I remember sitting in the back and seeing people and thinking, I want to be up there. I want to be speaking like that. I want to be a national marketing director. I want to be able to share my story and inspire other people. And, and you, if you don't go to those things, you'll never see it. Fantastic. So we're just sort of finishing off now, Emma. I mean, you've been utterly amazing. You've covered everything that we said we were going to cover. But I just want to ask you this, really. As a wife and a mother, what mm -hmm. does it really mean to you to be able to be free of the 95, and most importantly, really just to be nurturing your children with, with Juice Plus. What does that mean to you as a, as a wife and a mother? Oh, it means the world. I mean, um, it was, you know, when I joined the business, that wasn't initially, like I said, that wasn't anything that I even thought was possible. I didn't think that was something that, that, that what was going to happen for us until I, like I said, until I went along to some of these big events and met people for whom that had already happened. And I, and, I, and I then thought, well, if that can happen for them, then it can happen for me. Bob and Sue Burdick, for example, who were speaking in Birmingham, those kinds of people were living the life, are living the life that I want to lead. And um, now, like, so I'll give you like a really 60 second version of what before I very rarely saw my kids. I used to drop them off. If I was, if I, I used to try and do one end of the day or the other because I worked away quite a lot. So we would drop them off at school at eight o'clock in the morning. I picked them up at six. So that's a really long day for a kid, really long day. Um, and they, you get the rubbishy end of the day, you know, the bit in the morning, put your shoes on, put your shoes on, we're going to be late, going to be late, going to be late, throw them into school and then pick them up, throw some tea into them, throw them in the back, barely speak with them, and then put them to bed and flop on the couch with a glass of wine. That was us, totally. Um, we tolerated each other. We made a great marriage in a lot of respects, but didn't spend any time together, weren't getting to know each other any better. And kids were growing up and we didn't, I felt like I didn't know them. They couldn't even have their friends over after school for tea because it was too late by the time we picked them up from school. Couldn't do any after school clubs, couldn't have swimming lessons, any of that stuff. And then now, you know, we, we both dropped them off at school now because I was able to um, retire my husband from his corporate career as well. So at 37 and 39, both of us were able to leave our full-time corporate careers that we'd spent 20 years really building and 15 years in my case building. Um, and so now we both drop our kids off at school every morning at nine o'clock. We both pick our kids up from school every day at 3.30. So we're the only parents in the whole school really that, that do that every single day, both of us together. Um, we don't have to miss anything. Um, so sports day, for example, got moved last year because of the weather and it didn't matter. We were able to go on the Thursday instead of the Tuesday with no big deal. We spend 50 hours a week more with our kids than we used to. Like 50 hours a week between us more one-to-one -one time or one-to-two time or family time. And for me, I look at that and I think, imagine what impact that's going to have on their lives as they grow older. They're only, the youngest ones are now only five and eight. And they don't remember when we used to work. They don't remember when we didn't used to be there. And so tonight, for example, we picked them up from school. We went out for tea. We took them to karate, both of us took them to karate, brought them home, you know, played with them, put them to bed. And now I've done the Zoom call. So it's just been utterly utterly life-changing for us and a lot of people would love that life and I think that my obligation and yours is to give people that opportunity whether they do or don't decide to do something with it is entirely up to them but for me I think if someone knew about this and didn't tell me about it and I found out 10 years down the line that I could have had this lifestyle I'd be well not very happy so I'll tell everybody about it who could possibly benefit like we've benefited because now my relationship with my children is better, my relationship with my husband is better, our financial situation is better, we live in a bigger house, we drive better cars, we have all the time in the world to do all the things that we want, we can go on holiday when we want and, we just, and we're healthier. So we're able to enjoy the things we've got, we've got the money to do it and the time to do it too, so you can have it all, which is I always thought you couldn't.
Fantastic. Emma, that's, that's utterly amazing. I mean, um, you know, as you started off, you know, it's a business designed for business people and you'd be perfect at it. I mean, you are just such a, a, a brilliant, brilliant example of that. Um, you know, thank you so much. You've been amazing. It's just so honest and, and um, so straightforward. But um, it's, you know, it, it, it's incredible what you're saying, because for a lot of people, they've just been thinking, Do you know, I think I can actually believe this now. And, uh, and just seeing you with your story, it, it, it's very, very compelling. I will say, actually, that I think that's one of the most crucial things is the belief. I know it sounds a bit, a, a bit daft, but if you don't believe it, if you don't believe that it's possible, then how are you ever going to help somebody else to believe that it's possible? So if you don't believe that you can be a national marketing director by the end of the year or whatever your target is, if you don't believe that this product is life-changing for everybody that you meet, if you don't believe that the company is the best company on the planet, if you don't believe that you can do everything you want and be everything you want and have everything, everything you want, you'll never be able to take a team of people to the place where they believe it. So I never doubted it. I never doubted myself. I've never doubted the company and they never let me down. And you, that, that, is, that is such a unique opportunity for other people to take them from from a place of no belief to a place of total belief is, is, is massive opportunity for you to go out there and do that. But you have, to, you have to know it and believe it too so that you can help other people to do the same. And that's why we all need to be in Birmingham. And I think you've just summarised that up pretty perfectly. I mean, Birmingham is where we can get that massive injection of belief. Uh, you know, for those of us who have been to numerous conferences, you know, we still want to go uh, because it's just so exciting. We still want to Exactly. But for, for the new people, as we discovered and we've, uh, we've discussed tonight, it's absolutely critical. Um, so we can't wait to see you in Birmingham. I think you're, you're speaking. I don't know. I don't know. Who, I don't know. Right, right. They're just about to come up with the agenda, I know. Yeah. Yeah. So um, thank you very, very much, Emma. I mean, you've been amazing. Uh, this coming week, we have an event in London Thursday night. So if you have any uh, people, Emma, uh, in London, at Down to Earth Cafe in Kensington. Yeah, that cool. will be a wonderful event um, <laughs> at 7.30 on Thursday. But otherwise, Wicked. we really look forward to seeing you um, in, in Birmingham. Oh, and, um, I love seeing I you. But everyone on the call would be highly, highly motivated to come to Birmingham now because it really will be amazing. Oh, if you miss it, you'll miss out. It's literally as simple as that. I wouldn't miss it for the world. And I've never missed anything. Anything John told me to be at, I was at. And it worked. Fantastic. Okay, Emma, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Take bye care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you very much.